intelligently control access to computer resources, enforcing policies and audit system usage. Put into different terms, authentication determines which user want to access the network. Authorization determines what the user can do, and accounting keeps a log of what the user did during this their session. AAA play a part in almost every way we access the networks today. It is very important that the security analysts understand what AAA is and how it operates. There are a few key elements of AAA that we will discuss here today, including what type of access will be gained, administrative or network access, what protocol will be involved, and if the AAA server will be local or centralized. When a user or admin attempt to log in, there must be a challenge to identify the user. This identifying factor can be simple as a username and password, an identification card or even a fingerprint. Often this can be two-factor authentication, such as token generated form, an app that provides a one-time password to gain access to the system. Generally, there are two types of login, administrator and networks. If a user is trying to log in remotely via VPN, this of course would be considered network access. The process of logged in is called authentication. Once logged in, the user is given right to certain resources on the network. This is considered authorization. Lastly, the detail of the session, such as the resources a user accepted and the start and stop time of the session, those are considered accounting portion of the AAA framework. If a member of the IT staff was to log into a network device, such as a router, this would be considered an administrative login. This staff member would still go through the authentication, authorization and accounting process just as a network login. The authorization portion might give the staff member access to certain network devices as well as additional privilege on the router. If this person was a SAN administrator, this might only have access to configure the SAN portion of the network device that they are logged into. AAA can be configured locally on a device such as a router or a switch, or it can be configured as a central application. While simple, the, lo the locally configured AAA server is not scalable as compared to decentralized AAA server. Imagine a network with hundreds of devices using AAA for administrator to log into each device to configure access for a new hire. This administrator would have to go each of these hundred of devices at the user and give them an administrator defined password. Now let's look at the central AAA server where all the user and password are stored on a central device. In this scenario, the configuration of the network devices and the maintenance of the user is greatly simplified. Along with the username and password, the authorization policies can be defined centrally and mapped to the RBAC or RBAC configuration on the end device. If you need to change username, password or write, it is as simple as one change on the central AAA server. One of my favorite ways to maintain user is via lightweight directory access protocol or LDAP and many reasons for this are kind of selfie. Since most LDAP servers, user content database are maintained by the HR department. Not only do you have to think about the central device that is going to maintain the user database when beginning a remote AAA system, but you also need to know and understand the available protocol used to communicate between the device that you are logged into and the device performing the AAA service. There are two main protocols to choose from other than LDAP, RADIUS and TACAS. Both protocols perform similar function, but it is the background processes that differentiate the both, the three even we can say, LDAP, RADIUS and TACAS. RADIUS use UDB port uh, 1812, 1813 or 1645 and 1646 
It combines authentication and authorization while encryption while encrypting only the password and the sending the rest of the packet unencrypted or as clear text. On the other hand, Takas Plus uses TCP port 49. It separates authentication, authorization, and accounting, and it sends the entire message encrypted. So this was all from the AAA uh, session of the CCNA Cyber Security certification if you didn't subscribe my channel please subscribe my channel so next we are going to talk talk about firewall and the stateful firewall stay tuned see you in next lecture thank you